Today we will discuss the delivering intelligible audio in a facility that may present some challenges presented by the room acoustics, requirements for the audio hardware, and locations available to us to add speakers. This discussion for houses of worship can also apply to any large facility, as there are similarities in these challenges. When we design a system, we will need to determine some of the following criteria. We will need to know how the spoken word will be delivered, as there are many different styles that will have an influence on our hardware selections. Of course, the building structure will present a challenge to obtain intelligible sound, and will depend on whether the room is a lively room or a dead room. There are many different functions occurring that will also need different audio systems. Depending on the style of the sermon, room acoustics, and speaker locations available to us, proper speaker selection will be required. We will look at the different audio devices to achieve our goals, and always keeping in mind who will be operating the system. Once the hardware has been selected, we can consider the wiring methods and the types required. Finally, a look at what TOA Canada has to offer for all our audio needs. So we'll take a quick look at each of these influencing factors and improve our knowledge for providing intelligible and appropriate audio for houses of worship. Let's now have a look at how the system will be used. In all cases, regardless of the style of delivering the message, one common element is key to a successful audio system. We must have a system that has good speech articulation throughout the complete facility. After all, if the audience cannot understand what is being spoken, what would be the point of attending? We should also consider the aging population and the need to produce clear and crisp speech audio for those hard of hearing. The spoken message can be delivered in several forms. We can have just the spoken word delivered from the pulpit. There can also be the spoken word that has very light background music, as well as the spoken word with aggressive foreground live music. We see a trend in this later style of delivery as an attempt to appeal to a younger generation, and we need a PA system that is able to handle this type of audio energy. Another form would be a lyrical delivery. That is a more immersive style than just the spoken word, and will require a system with a wider frequency range to account for the more musical style of spoken word. And finally, a multi-presenter style of call and answer. That would re require multiple microphones located across the soundstage. It is important to, to discuss with the end user just how the message will be presented so that the appropriate audio system can be selected, because each of the different styles can present different challenges from wide frequency and dynamic range to many open microphones that requires attention to maintain system stability before feedback. Houses of worship can range from extremely lively spaces where speech articulation can be a real challenge to very well-behaved rooms similar to an office environment where obtaining good results is less challenging. Why do these large spaces create such a challenge to the audio design? A little background to what is going on in such large spaces will help. Large reverberant spaces are referenced by the term RT60. This is a measure of how long an audio impulse signal is active in the room after the signal stops. Measurements are made and the time noted that it takes for the audio impulse to TK minus 60 dB. Measuring devices are required to attain this calculation, and in most cases are not available to the average technician. However, it is important to understand the consequences of long RT60s. Generally, large spaces with hard surfaces will have long RT60 characteristics that would be pleasant to musical performances. This is the area between the two blue lines. However, they can play havoc with a spoken word. In the chart, we can see that generally an RT60 greater than 1.5 seconds, indicated by the red line, will require very focused audio from the speakers or a well-distributed speaker array. Ideal reverberation for speech is indicated between the green and the blue line. You can get a sense of how lively a room is by simply exciting the room by clapping one's hands and listening to the decaying sound. Not very scientific, but would give you an idea of the challenges at hand. Another tool is to have someone speaking in a normal voice at the front of the room, and then while that person is speaking, walk backwards until the point is reached where it is difficult to understand what is being said. Having someone read words randomly from a book is the best approach for this type of test. 
This test will help give you some idea where the speaker system must start to perform its task. So exactly how does a long RT60 affect the spoken word? Speech is made up of vowels and consonants that impart meaning to the words. The consonants provide the transient sound that can easily be masked by a reverberant space. As an example, the word back is made up of the ba and the k sounds. The reverberant space masks the k sound. The meaning of the word is lost, and it would be difficult to distinguish back from the words bat, bad, and bath as an example. One of the terms for speech intelligibility is Elkhorn's percent, or articulation loss of consonants and percentage. The lower the loss, the greater the intelligibility of the system. Some designers will specify the allowable Elkhorn's percent required by the audio system. Ideal numbers for RT60 would be anything less than 1.5 seconds, and for Elkhorn's percent, less than 11%. Although this information may not be readily available to you, Knowing and understanding these terms will help in selecting a solution. If there is an architect involved, you can always ask if they have a target RT60 for the facility, and if there will be any acoustic treatment to help deaden the reverberant field. So how can we accomplish clear articulate sound in a high RT60 environment? Since reverberation will mask the consonants, we must do as much as possible to try not to excite this reverberant space, and that means focused sound. Similar to a beam of light from a flashlight, line array speakers focus sound in one particular orientation. In most cases, this will be the vertical axis, thus keeping the audio energy off the ceiling and the floor and focusing the wavefront onto the audience. Conventional speakers have less dispersion control and will tend to spray sound onto all surfaces in an unfocused manner. We will take a look at line arrays shortly. We have seen that large spaces tend to have long RT60 characteristics, and care must be made to select the appropriate speaker types. These spaces also tend to have great depth, where sound must be delivered over a great distance. Turning up the volume is not the answer in most cases, as this tends to excite the aforementioned reverberant field, provide uncomfortable sound pressure levels to those at the front of the room, and presents a greater challenge to system stability. To overcome this situation, additional speakers must be provided further back into the room. Doing so requires additional processing devices and amplifiers to help delay the audio to these speakers in order to create a coherent wavefront. The diagram helps illustrate this concept. These delay speakers can be small conventional types driven at low power settings, as we are only trying to make up the difference of audio loss from the front speakers. You should use delayed speakers whenever these are placed more than 25 to 30 feet distant from the main speakers. Failure to delay the audio to these speakers will reduce the intelligibility caused by the perceived discrete echoes from the main speaker system. Often there will be areas that are not in direct line of sight of the main speakers, and we also need to add additional fill speakers to account for this. Depending on the distance again, these may also require a delayed signal. The audience plane must also be considered, as this will impact on how the speakers are mounted, and when using line arrays, dictate how tall these arrays must be to cover the audience area. Also consider if the audience is always seated, in some cases seated on the floor, or in a combination of seated and standing, and if the audience plane is raised, such as in an amphitheater-type fashion. Some other characteristics of these facilities also impact on what we can do to the building structure. In a lot of cases, architectural and iconic details will restrict placement of our speakers. Ideally, the best speaker placement is a single point source at the front of the room. However, this tends to be a prime location for structural and iconic details, and we are forced to use a two-speaker left and right arrangement. Speaker size is often an issue, as an invisible sound solution is generally desired, so you may be restricted in the choice of speaker. Choir and organ lofts will need a sound source to allow them to hear the cues from the presenter, and small conventional speakers work well here. In some cases, we are working with heritage sites where modifications to the building structure is not possible to host a large speaker system, so a distributed approach using many small conventional speakers may be required. 
One example of this is a pew-back system, where speakers are placed in the back of seats, evenly distributed throughout, or many speakers placed on the walls or ceiling, run at low power, and delayed appropriately in relation to the natural speaking voice of the presenter. Often ceilings or walls are not accessible, so an aesthetic method to running wire must also be found. Not only do we need to provide audio to the main room, we also may be required to distribute audio to other rooms, and I will mention these shortly. In existing structures, this can sometimes uh, lead to a challenge. However, for new construction, careful planning with the electrical division, appropriate conduit should be planned for. Here are some examples of the different building styles often used for houses of worship. We are seeing also a trend in gymnasium multi-purpose types of rooms that can be used for religious as well as youth sports activities. One service that TOA can, can provide is ease modeling. E stands for Enhanced Acoustic Simulation for Engineers and will allow one to take the guesswork out of speaker placement, energy requirements, and intelligibility. Above the amphitheater seating plan shown is a typical direct energy rendering showing sound pressure levels for three HX5s configured in a left, center, and right arrangement. We can also work with AutoCAD drawings to dimension facilities and can locate speaker placements. If you send us drawing, please include a plan view and a cross section for the various rooms. Besides the main room, we will often be required to provide distributed audio to different rooms and areas. These rooms will require their own level control to suit the activity and the size of the room. In most cases, the audio levels are low, and the ceiling speakers would be appropriate for this. The F122C is a wide dispersion, high intelligible speaker, well suited for these applications. In some cases, there are gymnasiums that will require speakers that are impact resistant. The HX5, the HS1200 and 1500, and the SR-T5 are all suitable models for these locations. These rooms would generally need a standalone mixer amplifier with the capability of receiving a feed from the main system. Besides the feed from the main system, telephone paging or mic paging may be required. For telephone paging, the 9000 series amplifier and the ZP telephone module will provide up to eight zones of telephone paging. If microphone paging is required, the same 9000 series with a paging microphone, such as the PM660U and the new ZM9013 8-button keypad, can also provide eight zones of mic paging. Often we are asked to provide an electronic means to simulate bells, and TOA has an extensive selection of outdoor-type speakers in the SC and the CS line that would be suitable for this purpose. The bells can be recorded onto our electronics messaging devices, such as the S20S and EV20R. Per functions may be required, and speakers can be permanently mounted or mobile types complete with mixer amplifiers supplied. Having all these subsystems will require a mixer amplifier that is capable of providing multiple zones, either as powered outputs or as line level outputs, to be fed to external multi-channel amplifiers. Full mixer matrix products would be the 9000 series, the D901, and the new D2000. Some examples of these types of equipment will follow in later slides. Now that we have an idea of the building structure and how the sermon will be delivered, we need to look at the actual functions of these different areas as selection of products will be dictated by the use of these rooms. Following are some of the functions you can expect to see. In the main room or sanctuary, we of course have the spoken word and the necessity of speech articulation. However, there may be the need for a speaker system that is able to provide a foreground music environment. Some services use music as a means to attract a younger audience, and as such, care must be taken to make sure the audio system is capable of supporting this level of frequency and dynamic range. This will usually require speaker components that are capable of handling more energy as well as amplifiers with ample headroom and generally more sophisticated processing involving speaker crossovers, filtering for tonal adjustment, speaker delay, and matrixing. Some of the other functions will require standalone systems 
with a feed from the main audio system. While choirs and bands generally need floor monitoring speakers, like the HS series, and possibly recording outputs for sermon archiving and later distribution. So what type of speakers do we select? This will generally depend on the room acoustics, the size of the room, and what form of service will be presented. Addressing the room acoustics, as we have seen, for large rooms with long RT60s, there really is no other choice but to use line array type speakers. With tight vertical pattern control, these are the most suitable choice. Speakers in this range would be the SRH, HX5, and the SRS line array speakers. For rooms where the RT60 is less than 1.5 seconds, smaller rooms or where budget is a concern, conventional speakers can be used for small line arrays or even pennant or ceiling speakers used in a distributed fashion. Typical selection would be the F122C ceiling speaker, the PE pennant speaker, F-series wall speakers, and the SRH line arrays. Paying attention to energy levels required by foreground music type systems, we would look for a full range high power speaker. Possible types would be the HX5, the SRC, and the SRA line arrays. As mentioned before, a typical gymnasium would work well with the SRT5 line array speaker with its simple wall mount design and low digital signal processing requirements. We could also use multiple suspended speakers, such as the PE pennant style. When looking at the differences between the line arrays and conventional speakers, note the advantage that the line array has. Because the wavefront is well controlled, the energy is placed on the audience and not bounced off the ceiling and floor, thus causing interference and potentially exciting the reverberant field. Also note that the energy decays only 3 dB for doubling of distance, so the line array is more efficient over distance. One other advantage is reduced tendency for feedback with open microphones. The different characteristics and coverage between the two speaker types is illustrated here. Note that the box type conventional speaker with its expanding wavefront produces a broader vertical coverage pattern than the line array with its planar wavefront. One thing to pay attention to is this very desirable pattern control of line arrays. Since we have controlled vertical dispersion, care must be taken that the speakers are placed correctly and the numbers of speakers selected will provide the coverage that we need. With conventional speakers, the expanding wavefront will cover more of the audience plane, but will also excite the reverberant field as well. Because the vertical dispersion of line arrays is so well controlled, it may not be obvious when aiming these speakers how much of the audience plane we are covering. This diagram illustrates the concept. Ideally, we would place the speaker so that it is parallel to the audience, as indicated in the top drawing. Mounting speakers in this fashion may not always be possible, and we would be required to raise them up and tilt them down. This is where we will need to pay attention to the covered area. Note that as we tilt the speaker, we will be covering less of the audience plane, as shown in the middle diagram. To compensate for this, an additional line array is placed above the first, the bottom illustration shows the correct coverage when tilting line arrays. TOA manufactures two different dispersion angles for fixed line arrays, such as the SRH and the SRS speakers. The long throw, which has a vertical coverage of zero degrees, and a short throw that is slightly curved that has a vertical pattern between 10, 20, and 35 degrees, depending on the model. Combining these two types together can help cover the audience plane when higher than normal placement is necessary and when there is raised seating. For non-fixed arrays such as the HX5, SRC, and the SRA, these types of arrays can be shaped to cover the near field as well as provide line array coverage to the back of the audience. We mentioned gymnasiums in a previous slide and how they could benefit from line array technology. The SRT5 is perfect for these, as well as the HX5. They exhibit the line array characteristics and are very rugged in design, thus able to take a direct hit from basketballs, etc. No need to cover these with metal cages. The HS series can be wall mounted and also used as floor monitors, as the cabinet is designed to tilt back and assume the typical floor monitor position. With its tweeter array, there is very good vertical control over the upper frequencies, and since they have a 12 or 15 inch woofer, they are also capable of producing a wide frequency range.
As mentioned before, for permanent installation of an outdoor speaker that must also produce a more musical tone, the CS series is well suited to carry voice and music. Once we have the types of speakers selected and where we are required to place them, a decision will be required to determine the complexity of the mixer, processing, or DSP and amplifier power. A simple low power system may only require eight or so input channels and one powered output, such as the A700 series. A more sophisticated foreground music type system may require many more open mics and audio sources, as well as multiple output channels to handle speaker crossovers, delayed fill speakers, and distributed audio. Products such as the 9000 series, the D901, and the D2000 are well suited to medium to large scale systems. When designing medium to large systems, it may be necessary to provide some form of auto mixing that will manage open mic gain. This technology can provide operator free mixing so that as the number of used microphones increases, the overall system gain is maintained below the feedback level, thus helping to improve system stability. The DSP function is available in the three products mentioned above. Also look at the control available if there is an operator. Do they need a mixer front end such as the D911 and the D2012 or will a third party type mixing console be provided? Larger systems will require multiple channels of power amplifiers such as the P9000 series and the DA series. The DA series are a digital class of amplifier with a very high efficiency of power transfer. When selecting amplifiers, calculate in a minimum of 20% of extra power to allow headroom for the amplifier. For music production systems, calculate in even more. High power amplifiers should always be placed as close to the speakers as possible using large gauge wiring as power will be dissipated in the speaker lines and we will need to keep this at a minimum. Also to consider is the necessity to control the volume, source, and system configuration in the rooms receiving distributed sound. For simple volume control, high impedance attenuators such as the AT series can be inserted into the speaker lines. For remote control electronically, the 9000 series has a range of ZM controllers. When medium to larger systems, the devices will often require a programming using a PC-based computer. Not only can the computer provide the configuration settings, it can also be used for real-time control, such as implemented in the D901 and the D2000 digital mixers. This complexity comes with a learning curve. Please take the time to become familiar with the programming software, and of course, please feel free to contact TOA Canada for any technical help, for training, or to allow us to configure remotely the system for you. This can be done by sending the setting file via email. As you have seen, the system can be simple to complex, so please always keep the end user in mind and how they will operate the system. Do they require a system that does not have an operator, but requires many open microphones that would benefit from auto mixing? Provide them with a simple control to remotely control the volume or to select desired sources. Now that we have discussed the different aspects of the hardware, what about the wiring required? The main speakers would generally be low impedance types that require ample amplifier power. Low impedance speakers of the 4 to 8 ohm variety generally exhibit a better frequency response than higher impedance type speakers. These speakers can be at full range or having their frequency split across dedicated speakers for bass, mid-range, and highs. In splitting up the frequencies in this manner, multiple amplifier channels are required, as well as signal processing supplied by the DSP device. Since there will be considerable power required by these speakers, large gauge stranded pair wiring is required. Anti-room and delayed speakers will generally be of the high impedance 70 volt variety. With the ease of all parallel wiring, they are well suited for this application. Because of the higher voltage to drive these speakers, there is less current required and thus less of a voltage drop across the speaker line, and as such, smaller gauge wiring can be used. Download our TOA wiring size chart on our website to help you determine the size of the wiring required for the power being delivered to the speaker load. For input wiring of balanced audio lines such as microphones or line level feeds to amplifiers, use a two-conductor stranded pair with shield 
of about 22 AWG gauge in size. One item that I generally get calls on is the installation of unbalanced lines from CD players, etc. These types of signal lines are only usable for a few feet in any commercial application. If you need to run these at any length, balance these up first using a suitable transformer or active device. Failure to do so can lead to some nasty noise in the system. You may get away with it a few times, but sooner or later you will have to rewire the system if the noise becomes an issue. Control wiring. Check the documentation that comes with the TOA products, as not all wiring required for control is the same. Especially watch out for CAT5 requirements that are shielded. This is not a common type wiring and may require a special order. When specifying conduit, keep in mind the different signal levels that require separate conduit systems. Do not mix unlike signal levels, or you may be in for a big surprise. Each of the signal levels noted here require distinct and separate conduit systems. One last thing on wiring is grounding. On large systems, have the electrician provide an isolated single ground point for the equipment rack. All grounding in the rack should be referenced to this single ground point. This will help to prevent ground loop problems. Also have the electrician supply all electrical feeds from the same phase of the AC feed. In summary, same ground, same phase. Let's now look at some of the specific TOA equipment to implement the requirements of a house of worship. The featured products are not the only choice, but just as representation of the possible TOA products that could be used. Any combination of equipment is possible and will be depend on the requirements. First, we'll start with a small, simple system. At the front end, we'll have to select a microphone system of either wired or wireless. For direct line of sight, the WS series of wireless, or the WT5810, is a cost-effective system. By direct line of sight, I mean that the receiver is in direct view of the transmitter, the microphone, as these units do not have remote antennas. If you are not able to provide a clear line of sight, you can choose other receivers, as noted in the next slide, that can provide for a remote antenna. So the decision will be to select either wired or wireless microphone systems with handheld or lavalier wireless mics. Next, we can use a simple mixer amplifier like the 700 series with multiple mic line inputs and a single power amplifier section. For remote control, we can add in the high impedance AT series of controls that connect between the high impedance speaker and the amplifier. With this arrangement, we have a single channel of power with many branch zones. If paging is desired, this could only be an all-call scenario. Connecting to these controllers are a large possible selection of high impedance speakers with their ease of installation for wiring and power settings. The F122C would be the speaker of choice for ceiling installation and for architecturally sensitive locations. The H series would fit in well. Moving now on to a larger size system that affords more flexibility and signal routing in individual powered zones, we can have the same input sources as before, but note the addition of the PBX telephone paging possible with the 9000 series of digital mixer amplifier using the ZP001T module. With the 9000, we have, as mentioned, more control over separate zoning, electronic remote control using the ZM controllers, PC programming, and multiple speaker systems that use dedicated high and low frequency speakers. The 9000 is modular based and can be configured with a maximum of 8 inputs and 8 outputs. The 9000 series DSP is able to supply crossovers, PEQ filtering, auto mixing, delays, and matrixing. The same range of speakers are available to us as before with the addition of the SRH line arrays. Again, this is only a sample scenario and within reason, any of these products can be mixed and matched. For a medium sized system, some recommended products would be the WT5800 wireless receiver that allows for connection of the remote antenna YW4500. As a mixer, we would select the modular D901 that can be configured as a 12 input by 8 output mixer matrix. This unit can be programmed from the front panel or via software and can also be operated in real time using the included software. The D901 has a complete set of DSP capabilities for crossovers, PEQ filtering, auto mixing, delay, and matrixing. For a 
simple uncluttered mixing desk for the operator, the D911 provides an analog feel to control the D901 digital mixer. Modules are also available to provide a connection point for custom panels to allow for remote volume and scene control. Full amplifier channels can be provided by the high efficiency DA series of amplifiers. For the main speaker system, we suggest the HX5 combined with the FB120 subwoofers for sonic impact when providing an audio system that must support a moderate music component. These array type speakers can be configured to cover the near and far fields. Other possibilities would be the SRH and the SRS line arrays. Delayed fill speakers or anti-room speakers are as before, from the S-series ceiling speakers to the architectural H-series. For extra bottom end, the FB100 could be used in any breakout room. For large impact systems, we have moved to the Trantec series of wireless microphone that allows one to monitor the performance of the mic system using software. The Trantec series can be purchased with either a handheld microphone or a lavalier style mic. This professional wireless mic system is well suited to performance-based services when many mics are required. Introducing the new D2000 digital mixing system, this modular-based mixer matrix allows up to 32 combined inputs or outputs from one unit. As an example, you could have 24 inputs and 8 outputs, or any combination of 32 from a single main frame. For really large systems, this combination can be expanded to 128. The D2000 has a complete set of DSP capabilities for crossovers, PEQ filtering, auto mixing, delay, and matrixing. Connection between the main D2008 SP units is via CobraNet using simple TCP IP switches and CAT5 wiring. Mixing control, you can select the D911 or the new D2012 with its multi-layer scene recall, motorized faders, and complete volume control over inputs and outputs. Used in conjunction with the supplied software, the operator can control all aspects of the system in real time. Connection to the D2012 to the D2008 SP unit is via CAT5, so all those mic feeds and amplifier returns can stay at the stage. No need to run all those cables back to the mixing desk. Multiple channel amplifiers selected from the DA series will power the crossover speakers, delayed speakers, and any anti-room locations. For that impact system, choose the SRC or the SRA large format line arrays. These impressive speakers will provide the necessary SPL and dynamic impact required for that demanding audio system and allow coverage of the near and far audience areas. You can view some of our installation profiles by visiting our website at toacanada.com. And in conclusion, meet with the end users to determine the functionality required. Determine what type of speakers are best suited to the acoustic environment, and where can these speakers be placed based on the architectural conditions. Other rooms and services require audio systems, and how can the wiring be installed? What type of user controls are required, and how big a system is really needed? How complex does the system need to be, and who will operate that system? It's all about the spoken word. Intelligibility is the key, and this will have to be explained. Cost, always a concern, but put in the right system once, not the wrong system three times. Allow TOA Canada to help with the design and any software programming. That concludes our uh, webinar on the uh, Houses of Worship. Uh, I hope you can take away something of uh, value with this.